We have been talking about the permeability and flow of groundwater in porous media and uh, uh, we have been discussing about this problem that there is a porous media encased in a glass tube or a control volume and then uh, we were trying to analyze this problem as far as total head is concerned pressure head is concerned and uh, the elevation head is concerned. So, as far as the elevation head is concerned that is easy to obtain. So, if I say point elevation head this is in meters, the pressure head is also in meters and the total head this is also in meters. So, point 1 was quite straightforward. We have already proven that between point 0 and 1 there is not going to be any flow <coughs> because the total heads are same. Point 1 the if I assume the elevation to be matching with the free water table and suppose if I assume this as x. I am sure you must be realizing that the most of the confusion is because of selecting the datum. So, you have to add this x to this. A better way of doing this would be if I shift the datum at point 2, alright. So, the moment I shift datum to point 2, life becomes simple. At point number 2, the elevation head is 0. And what about the pressure head? This is exposed to the atmosphere. So, the pressure head is 0, total head will be 0. I will tell you what is the fallacy which we are discussing last time. At point number 1, the elevation head is L, the pressure head is L plus H. No, sorry, H and hence the total head is L plus H. So, the hydraulic gradient would be if I compute the hydraulic gradient this will be delta H upon L which is H 1 minus H 2 over L this is nothing but L plus H over L all right. The porous media is described by these parameters that is uh, porosity, void ratio, gamma d is known, SR is known, specific gravity is known and so on. <coughs> now, the moment you shift point number 2 to let us say 2 prime, what is going to happen? So, this is where the trick is. I think you should be careful when you are writing these heads. If I shift to the point 2, what is going to happen? The elevation head at point number 2. So, this is a second situation. When I have shifted, when the datum is at let us say A A, at point number 2, the elevation head is x. Now, what you have to understand is that this is directly exposed to the atmosphere because of its connection with the free water table. So, if you put a piezometer over here, it is not going to get you know rise up to this point this is not correct why it is not correct it cannot get lifted up to this point what is the reason because you have a situation where the boundary condition says that this line is exposed to the atmosphere and hence the total head at this point is going to be 0, clear. Now, those of you who are confusing this with the situation which we have been dealing with in the past when we are considering different type of layered system 
and I had asked you to find out what is the state of stress at this point and find out the UW, clear and suppose the water table is up here. Now, in this case I can install a piezometric tube over here and this is what is going to rise up to this point and hence the head is going to be this much. So, what is the difference between this situation and this situation? Anybody in the class? And that is what you have to understand. Here the boundary conditions are different as compared to this, this is a continuum. I hope you are getting this point which is not exposed to the atmosphere. So, if you install a piezometric tube over here, this will go and meet the phreatic surface. But in this case, at this point and this point the atmospheric conditions prevail. So, it is a good idea to shift the datum to the bottom most point of the sample, it becomes easy to go ahead with the analysis. Is this part clear? This is the discrepancy which I wanted to discuss in the last lecture. Is this part clear? Another way of doing this would be, if you say the elevation head here is x, if I install a piezometer here, what is going to happen? This is going to drop to minus x and hence the total head will be equal to 0. I think the better way would be to shift the datum and do the analysis. Is this part okay? Now, what I will do is, I will go ahead with the, the another situation. Yeah, so see what we have done is, we have established here that the pressure gradient across this sample is delta H upon L and delta H upon L is nothing but H1 minus H2 upon L. H2 is 0 once you shift the datum over here, H1 is equal to L plus H divided by L is the hydraulic gradient. Now, this gradient is going to cause the flow through the porous media. So, this yellow arrow shows the flow through the porous media, where point number 1 elevation head, see if you fix the datum over here, so this is the elevation head at point 1, this is L. If you put the piezometric tube over here, it goes meets up to here, so L H plus, clear. So, pressure head is H at this point, elevation head is L, total head at this point is L plus H. Have you understood the discrepancy? Okay. Have you understood this part and this part, the difference between these two? There is no boundary condition which is enforcing the atmospheric condition. Now, if I do engineering, how would you do surgery of the system? Suppose if I include a layer of a porous media over here. Nowadays, directional drilling is possible, you can drill literally, alright. A good example is our Santa Cruz airstrip, where the literal drilling is done to take all the pipelines under the active runway and then this I can connect to the atmosphere, clear. So, what I have done? I have created the same situation as this over here. Now, at each and every point here, this is what is known as a filter. I have included a sand layer, in case of your gas hydrates, you are doing hydrofracturing and you are making this system more permeable. This is connected to the atmosphere and hence the pore water pressure at this point is going to be 0. Then this situation is identical to this situation, it is okay. Any questions? Is this clear? So, this is what the engineered system is, I hope this point is clear. Now, let us do a bit more of extrapolation of the situation uh, with which we are dealing with here. So, what we have done is we have established the flow condition over here and why flow is there because of delta H by L hydraulic gradient. Whatever drop in column between point 0 to 1 is going to take place, this is the discharge, clear. 
whatever flow is going to take place from point 1 to 2 because of the presence of porous media would be seepage or flow through porous media. Now, when the discharge or the flow is taking place through or the seepage is taking place through porous media, what we do is we introduce the component V s. This is what is known as the seepage velocity. I hope you understand the difference between this. So, this is your Q upon area of cross section which is nothing but the capital V and what is going to enter into this system is because of seepage, this will be the seepage velocity. Now, it so happens that seepage velocity is equal to discharge velocity upon porosity. How? Suppose if I consider a control volume and this is in the third dimension like this, these are the pores and rest of the portion is solid soil mass. So, these are the pores. Suppose if I say area of the pores is A V, air whites and area of the solids is A S. So, the total area will be equal to A S plus A V, is this okay? Now, imagine if the discharge is taking place in this direction which is equal to Q, what is going to happen? The certain amount of water is going to enter through the pores, not the entire flux because the solid portion is going to put lot of resistance in the flow and that is what we have defined as the hydraulic conductivity K, coefficient of permeability. Is this okay? So, if I say that the Q is equal to A S and A S multiplied by V, is this okay? And this will be equal to area of pores multiplied by seepage velocity. This is the continuity. So, that means what I am saying is V s equal to A s upon A v multiplied by velocity v, sorry, which one on this side, uh, yeah, there is the, uh, yes you are right. So, this is, no I can deal with A solids also, no. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you are right. So, let it be like this. Now, what it indicates is that the seepage velocity is always greater than the discharge velocity. Which one is faster? The water molecule has to travel from one point to another point either in the microscopic length or in the macroscopic length. So, L will be the macroscopic length. To maintain the continuity. Now, this path is going to be tortuous. That means, this path is not going to be straight line, this path is going to be something of this sort, alright. So, this is 1 and 2, which I have represented here as 1 and 2. However, the linear dimension is straight. So, imagine if the discharge is taking place through point 1 and 2, the seepage is going to take place through 1 and 2, but to maintain the equity or the continuity, the time is same, the discharge in the form of seepage is going to be same as the discharge in the form of the discharge and hence this is what comes out to be from this analysis. See when the water is entering from 1 to 2, there are two possibilities, either the, 
either the water moves through the macroscopic lens which is the physical dimension of the sample or through the interstices, interstices of the soil sample which are quite tortuous in nature. That means in the same time if the same distance is to be covered the velocity through this is going to be more than velocity through this. What it indicates is that the velocity of discharge sorry flow of water is going to be lesser when you have macroscopic length. But when the discharge is taking place through the microscopic lens which is the torticity, the seepage velocity is going to be higher than the discharge velocity. Uh, normally how would you maintain the continuity? Suppose if I give you a cylindrical sample and if I say that the Q is moving from here and Q is coming out, there is no loss of fluid, clear? Imagine like this. So, this is what actually we are trying to analyze. This is another attribute of the porous media which we are going to use over here. So, when I say the flow has initiated because of the hydraulic gradient, there is going to be a velocity component V s. So, V is known capital V, if porosity is known V s is known and you can show how V s is changing with respect to V. Now, because of the virtue of this porosity, as I said V s is going to be more than capital V, the discharge. So, this is what we have to include over here. Is this part okay? Now, if you go back to this equation where the Darcy's law says, Darcy's law is valid for discharge velocity. So, we say that discharge velocity is proportional to hydraulic gradient, correct? Or this is equal to k into i. What is k? Coefficient of permeability. What is coefficient of permeability? This is the resistance offered by the porous media to the flow of fluid. Is this okay? The units are in centimeter per second. So, there are two definitions which are prevalent in this direction, in this context not direction. The one definition is how do you define permeability? The permeability is defined as the rate of flow of water under laminar conditions. through a unit cross section cross sectional area of a porous medium under a unit hydraulic gradient. hydraulic gradient is I and the standard temperature conditions. So, basically permeability is the rate of flow of water under laminar flow conditions through a unit cross sectional area of a pore porous media under a unit hydraulic gradient and standard temperature conditions. That means, if I put I equal to 1, the discharge velocity is equal to k. Now, most of the time what is done is that there is a relationship between coefficient of hydraulic conductivity and I think last time I told you to stick to small k because I wanted to preserve capital K for some other notation. So, this is (coughs) 
all right this capital k is known as intrinsic permeability all right just concentrate on the board for a minute try to understand what is this concept which i am introducing over here the hydraulic conductivity k is let us say two variables a multiplied by b capital k depicts the porous media this is the fundamental characteristic of the porous media and that's why we call this as intrinsic permeability intrins intrinsic means fundamental nature fundamental behavior it's not going to change however b term so this is the pm and what is b b is the fluid clear in other words hydraulic conductivity or coefficient of permeability is a sort of a interaction of porous media with a fluid mathematical definition would be this is how you define the interaction between solid porous media and the fluid clear so the mapping is between the material porous media and the fluid what is rho into g density unit weight clear divided by mu viscosity of the fluid so attributes of the fluid attribute of the porous media conductivity clear i hope now you can understand easily what i have to determine not capital k i should be determining sorry not small k i should be determining capital k because this is what is corresponding to a porous system fluid can be anything it could be water it could be contaminated water it could be hydrocarbon it could be gases it could be bacterial suspension whatever clear so this is what please remember outside mean okay yeah so you are talking about this portion that means there is no you are right so there is no porous media over here this is the discharge this is the seepage this is again the discharge you are right in this por which portion in this portion in this portion viscosity is not so important because we are not talking about the seepage taking place through the porous media this is the discharge only so suppose if you remember last time we had derived some expression falling head test so as the time passes by what is going to happen this column is going to decrease is it not so h is decreasing and then we had taken is minus del h bar del t so this is a free discharge this is the seepage that's the difference and seepage is one minute seepage is attributed to all these characteristics this is a glass tube and i am filling up the sample over here this is the soil sample porous media this is your point number 1 this is your point number 2 clear and this is kept in the water bath come out of all confusions simplify things treat your this is h water table this is the water level here and the length of the sample is l shift the datum to this point number 1 to get rid of all this confusions so this becomes my datum elevation head at point 1 is known what you want is pressure head how would you obtain the hydrostatic pressure head over it if you put the piezometer here this will go up to this height clear so that means the piezometric head at point 1 is h the piezometric head at point 1 is going to be rising up to the height h to equilibrate with the atmospheric conditions at this point now the elevation head has become zero what is the pressure head because this itself is atmosphere is zero finished total head at this point is zero total head at this point is going to be l plus h coming back to your question head across this and this is l plus h 
the gradient is L plus H upon L which is going to cause the flow into the sample otherwise this is free discharge. This is also free discharge, agreed? Is this part clear? By virtue of being a porous media, the void ratio, density, soil property, special gravity all are defined. What you are ensuring is this is a steady state and hence the sample is fully saturated. If sample is not saturated, then the problems will occur. We always talk in terms of meters of the pressure head. If you remember, the pressure head at this point is the height of the piezometric rise in water. So, this is going to be H, clear? Now, suppose, now I am going to play with the boundary condition. So, please have a close look at what I am going to discuss. This is my tube and this is the porous media, fine. Now, what I will do is, I will connect it to a water bath. Is this okay? So, all those who are asking this question of the surface being exposed to the atmosphere, I think now you are realizing something what I have done. Have I done something substantially different or is the same thing what I have been discussing until now? Then you have understood what I am going to talk about. It does not matter where I connect this point to. So, what I am basically doing is, this is the head difference between the two water levels and the logic says that the hydraulic gradient is the one between the difference of the energy state between the two surfaces and that is what is going to cause the flow. Suppose if I lower it down a bit, what is going to happen? The discharge is going to place from, take place from 1 to 2. The moment I have lifted it up, what is going to happen? Discharge is going to take place from 2 to 1. Is this point clear? Simple mechanics. Have you understood this? I can change the flow direction through the porous media just by manipulating the edge. H could be positive, H could be negative. So, if I bring it down and if I keep this cistern or what you call it as a reservoir somewhere here, what is going to happen? Now, the delta of the free water surface and this free water surface is going to cause the discharge to take place. Let us prove it. You can fix the datum somewhere. Work it out. Now, when you go back today, please do this with different, different datums. You know the total energy here, donor total energy here and you can prove that the discharge is going to take place from 2 to 1. Is this part okay? Have you understood this? Now, suppose if I ask you to draw the free body diagram of this element, there is another manipulation. First, understand the manipulations, different type of manipulations which I can do. I can replace this porous media by a multi-layered system, agreed? That means, I can say this system has permeability K1, this has K2. In earlier case, you must have realized that the dissipation of the hydraulic gradient is going to take place between 1 and 2 and that was linear. Now, because of introduction of K2 and K1, what I have done? I have manipulated the system much more. I am tending towards more natural processes and let me complicate it further. K1 with porosity E1, porosity E2. E1, E2, gamma D1, gamma D2, G1, G2. What else nature, nature offers you? Same thing. So, what I have created? I have created a multi-layered system, two-layered system, where now you are going to be in a difficulty, but it is simple. Now, what I can do is, this 1 and 2 I can replace with point number 3 and I can still go ahead with the same thing. What I require is one equation of continuity. That means, this Q is going to be the same as this Q is going to be the same as the Q which comes out, that is it. In other words, if my Q remains same, I will say K1 multiplied by H1 minus H2 over 
L12, this will be equal to K2 H2 minus H3, is this correct? L32. And area of cross section, so area of cross section you multiply. Fortunately, the area of cross section remains same, so that does not come to picture. Another manipulation, what I can do, I can reduce the area of cross sections. So, I can create a sample like this, the first layer and then second sample is sitting like this, okay. So, this is your first sample, this is your second sample or a multi-layered sample, whatever. Is the concept clear? As far as the total head, pressure heads are concerned, they remain same. Only thing is, now you are introducing a point at which the state of energy is not known, which can be solved by using the continuity principle. Yeah, so this Q is nothing but your A into V, alright. So this V is here and this V is here also, that is it, is this okay, concept clear? Look at the pressure gradient, that is important. So, at this point and this point, the pressure gradient was straight line earlier. Now, what has happened? The slope has got changed. Why? Because you introduce another point, another property here. So, earlier this was like this. Now, who knows? It might have become like this. And you simply create a datum over here. Now, you will not be confused at all. I hope all this is gone. It is the same thing. In, in the previous case, what did I do? I kept, I mean, how does it matter whether you are keeping it in a tube connected to this or whether this whole thing is inside a water bath? It does not matter. If you are putting vacuum over here, so this it does not matter. Keep the datum as it is. Pressure at this point will become minus of your value of vacuum which you are applying. That is it. Is this okay? So, if this point is being sucked with a suction pump, what will be the pressure at this point? Minus that value. So, what happens to the hydraulic gradient? This is a good question. So, if you suck something, what happens? Now, he is getting realization of what we are discussing. The discharge increases. So, minus of this thing and this minus of minus of this thing, that means the hydraulic gradient is going to become higher. Clear? So, V is proportional to I. So, that means the movement of the fluid through this porous system will be get enhanced. Now, let us manipulate this a bit more. Direction of flow is clear to all of you. This head is causing everything to happen. Now, suppose if I draw the free body diagram, draw it. How many forces are acting? Okay, you let us let us do it together. So, is there something acting from the top? How much is that? This is a sample. What is the total head at point 1? H total head. This H is not directly connected to point 1. There is a dampener in between which is soil mass. Clear? So, that means at this point elevation head is known L. If you are putting the data mat over here, at this point the pressure head is Z. So, total is L plus Z into gamma W into A. Is this part clear? What is happening here? At this point, what is the elevation head? 0. What is the pressure head? If you connect this to the piezometric column, what is going to happen? L plus Z plus H, this surface is connected to the atmosphere here. So, this is L plus Z plus H gamma W into A. What is the other force which is acting on this element? Very good, excellent. So, what is the weight component? Sorry? Yes. So, weight will be equal to L, L, very good, L, what gamma? What type of gamma? 
हम्म सॉरी गामा ड्राई होल थिंग इज पुट इन ए स्टडी स्टेट कंडीशन हाउ कैन दिस बी ड्राई यस डोंट डू दिस मिस्टेक्स दीज आर बेसिक्स ऑल राइट सो गामा सैचुरेटेड एंड ए नाइस आर यू हैप्पी विद दिस what is the other force which is going to act on this element i said something if i raise this and if i bring it down i can modulate something yes you are right not gradient force so that means yes he is right have you understood have you ever seen a dash pot okay Uh, if you go to the hospitals you must have seen uh, these uh, salines uh, so what do they do they put it on a stand if you are lying on a bed over here clear so what you do normally they put a saline here correct this is the same situation what what dot normally sisters will do they will modulate the height of the saline so somewhere they will fix it if it is a small kid they can't put it 1 meter high why imagine the hydraulic head now we are going to see what going to happen we are going to model that thing this is okay so if i lower it down and bring it up i can create a force which is going to act on the sister so this is your seepage force where the seepage force is acting what is the plane on which the seepage force is acting you have to look at the figure where your data is at this point why because the entire pressure head and elevation head is acting at this point clear so truly speaking what's happening you have 1 2 3 4 says and they are being balanced by f and this is what is known as seepage force now so this is the seepage force that video clipping was regarding what quick sand so we are going to create quick sand condition how so little bit more of understanding for all of you you know let's put it in components let us filter out the seepage force in the form of hydraulic gradient so what i can do is i can say l plus z into gamma w a of course weight is acting and this becomes l plus z gamma w a plus if i write like this is there any problem what i have done i have filtered out the effect of the hydraulic gradient h h was the driving force which is causing seepage to occur from point number 2 to 1 because this is how the flow is going to take place so the flow is now taking place from 2 to 1 positive gradient is here less gradient is here all right so suppose if i write this expression f is equal to now this is what is known as seepage force normally we define seepage force per unit volume now if i do per unit volume what is going to happen this will become a into l and this can be written as i into gamma w so i into gamma w is the seepage force which is acting on the system clear the whole situation could be something like you know this is a dam made up of concrete or earthen earth 
and for me there is no difference between this system, this system and this system. Is this okay? The moment I have created H over here, rains might do it in the due course of time. What has happened? There is a H which got created over here. Look at the base what is going to happen? I into gamma W per unit volume is acting here. Have you understood the consequence of this? Ah, I will come to that, do not worry. First, let us talk about the CPEG. There is a more cul big culprit, no? CPEG is, listen, but what I should be worrying about is the CPEG forces. So, this is what I am trying to explain right now. We will take care of that part, do not worry. So, what I am trying to do is this situation is a simplified model to do the analysis. This is out of the way, I discuss something. And this is the real life situation which forces us to study what is the influence of hydraulic gradient on the stability of the structures. Is this part clear? And what we have done systematically is we have shown that this is the hydraulic gradient which is the seepage force per unit volume. Now, rest is all simple mechanics, you can solve this. I will skip few steps and try to solve this function. Uh, uh, if you can write it quickly, it saves some of my time. So, this will be equal to L gamma submerged minus H gamma W into A. Try to show this. This is the seepage force. What is F upon A? Stress, clear? And suppose if I say that this is effective stress, why? H gamma W is what? Powder pressure. So, L gamma submerged minus powder pressure is nothing but the effective stress. And if I put a condition that this tends to 0, this is nothing but your sand boiling. Now, if you simplify this, what you will be getting? Can you do it quickly? I comes out to be, what is I? H upon L. We define this as critical. This will be equal to G minus 1 over 1 plus E. Try to prove this. Is this correct? Uh, Jasmine, is this equation correct? You must be remembering. Is this okay, Bini? So, you try to prove that. <coughs> I H upon L critical will be G minus 1 over 1 plus C. E. What it indicates is a soil is going to boil under hydraulic gradients and at that time the hydraulic gradient is this which is equal to the specific gravity minus 1 over 1 plus void ratio. Have you understood the whole kahani? Or not. So, you are talking about the weight, what you have to do is F will be F will be equal to what? F plus this equal to this plus this. A better way of defining this would be this minus this minus this is equal to F. Mathematically, they are same, is same as the H, correct, H is causing the entire story. So, what is H? This H. This is the incremental pressure. Now, do an exercise, suppose H tends to 0. What is the meaning of this? This water column matches with this water column and try to see what happens. So, what is your intuitive feeling? If H tends to 0, what is going to happen? Hydraulic gradient is going to be 0. 
that is it. So, in other words this is the response of the porous media to the external gradients, hydraulic gradients.